When something goes wrong, I tell team that, okay, come up with the three things which we could have done better from mm. our end in order to not get into this situation, right? Mm. So we are literally, you know, changing mindset of our uh, entire leadership team uh, to think more positive and optimistic mm. and constantly learning. Welcome to the Agency Hour podcast, where we help web design and digital agency owners create abundance for themselves, their teams, and their communities. This week, we're joined by Manish Dudharegia, hope I got that right, founder and CEO of E2M Solutions. E2M uh, helps digital agencies solve bandwidth and capacity problems with white label services and are an exclusive sponsor of the Agency Hour. Uh, So it only made sense to have Manish join us this week as our 100th episode, which is amazing. In this episode, we explore why leadership needs to own failures and pass the credit, which is much easier said than done. We define the fundamentals of creating processes that actually help you solve the problems that your agency experiences every day. And we discuss problems with working outside of scope and how to avoid it, as well as the challenges of keeping your team on track and consistently delivering high quality services as your team grows. All that and much more. I'm Johnny Flash. Stay with us. Manish, it's so great to see you. How are you doing? Johnny, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, thank you for having me on the show again. It's, I'm excited to speak with you again. Oh, man, it was so great to have you uh, and some of your team come out to MavCon uh, here outside of Washington, D.C. Just, uh, man, it was just last month. Um, and I just really enjoyed getting to hang out with you, um, your team, all the fun that we had. It was just really great. Absolutely. You know, uh, it was absolutely a very unique experience. Uh, I know we sponsored last year Melcon in San Diego, but I wasn't there. Kevin from our team who actually lives in San Diego, he was there. Mm-hmm. But this time, you know, we first time uh, we in person attended in the US Melcon. Obviously, we were in Australia a few months back uh, in yeah. Gold Coast. Uh, but yeah, so. It was absolutely very unique experience, you know, the moment we got into Fairfax uh, and then kind of like reached to the hotel, like, you know, from there we came to your house and yeah, thank you for inviting us, hosting us at your house. It was fun to play the game. So the beginning of Melcon started very casually. Uh, Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like we are at conference. Mm-hmm. It feels like, you know, it's it's a get together of a community of members. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was a very altogether different feeling. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, it was so much fun to have be at your house. And 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 I think the the highlighter of the entire uh, event is like, you know, the actual event happened at the church. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. which was very different experience. Right. Uh, yeah. Where the venue was very unconventional mm-hmm. and. You know, two of uh, my colleagues came to the States for the first time and did Melcon for the first time. And they also had a fantastic experience. So hmm. it was absolutely great experience. Oh, that's so great to hear. For, for our listeners that are listening in that maybe don't know all the details. So MavCon is a three time a year event that we have um, kind of rotated around the world, you know, so that everybody can have the opportunity to come. Uh, but it's for our Mavericks and uh you know, some special guests where we basically just have an in-person, you know, two, three day conference. Uh, And and, and like you said, I think it's really more like a gathering of of kind of like-minded, sharing ideas, learning things, uh, very just sort of um, practical and kind of where the rubber meets the road. And we've got a number of amazing sponsors, Manish, who is one of them uh, with E2M. And, uh, we had a, an event before the conference started that I hosted at my house. (laughs) Um, and we, uh, we did this out, we had this guy come who has these amazing like laser tag, uh, kind of gun things and, and all the things. And I have a big yard. And so we had all this obstacles and different things and made teams and we were playing outside, uh, in the fall weather here in, in the United States. And it was, it was so much fun. And we, and then we went out to eat and all the different things, but yep. uh, it was great to host uh, both our our kind of mavericks and our sponsors for that um, event that was before the conference started at my house. And then, 
Yeah, we just uh, we kind of did it unconventional. Usually, we're in a hotel conference room and you know <laughs> everything like that. And I I had messaged the team w- way long time ago, and I said, hey. I know this is crazy and like not what we told normally do, but my church just opened this $24 million building that's brand new. It has all this amazing space and AV and all these things. And I was like, what if we like had it at my church? I know that's totally weird and it's not Mavcon's not a church thing or anything like that, but um, our church has just been so great about making space available for the community and for different organizations. We just had our local fire department's graduation ceremony in our main auditorium for like a thousand people and all these fire department graduates. And like, obviously that's not a church thing or whatever. Right. But we have this, uh, a lot of amazing spaces at the church that can be used by the community. And so the church was on board. I got Troy and Emily on board with it. And, uh, so it was really cool. And then I guess the big surprise was that we were able to do uh, a concert uh, yeah, at the. I was at, about uh, to toward, say that t- toward the. Yeah, go ahead. You can share. <clears throat> yeah, I think you know. Uh, I, I I totally agree. You know, uh, when actually we were at your house and you know playing that uh, laser shooting game and and that's the time I got to know that uh, the event is actually happening at church tomorrow and and then you know I had an image of church like okay are we seriously going to have a, an event at church and then i you know we purposely didn't announce that yeah. part <laughs> I, I, I thought so i thought so i'm like this is a huge surprise but then you know uh i was discussing with my colleagues and they actually pulled up images of a church on on google mm-hmm. and uh, we were like no it's it's not that kind of church it's yeah, actually yeah. a really it looks like an event venue yeah, and I, I feel like the space was perfect uh, mm-hmm. for the audience. Uh, the number of people we had, yeah. it was absolutely comfortable, perfect. Uh, you know, small, cozy place, perfect. Mm-hmm. We had a great uh, place outside mm-hmm. for hangout, tea, coffee, lunch, and I think the concert. Yeah, so you know, uh, that was a huge surprise. It was <laughs> on the last day when. Uh, they had planned the surprise and it was kind of like evening at four and we were told to, you know, go into an auditorium. Uh, we had no idea what's going to happen. Right. And we were sitting in the auditorium and, and Troy, Troy and Adam Silverman, he was like, you know, playing the drums and there was someone also, uh, and it was Johnny's uh, son as well, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, there were four people on the stage and, and they absolutely rocked the stage. It was like an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, it was absolutely completely unexpected, uh, but we truly enjoyed it. And that was like, you know, uh, that was kind of like, you know, the moment, uh, the time when we felt like, okay, uh, this is the, cannot, could not think of better way to end the conference and the band oh, the cool. event, right? And yeah. Troy truly performed like the rock star. We, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, the I rock was, star and Troy came yeah, out, right? Yeah, rock star came. We saw a, uh, you know, absolutely a different version of Troy on the stage. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, in the first half, we saw a different version. In the second half, in auditorium, we saw a different version. And and Adam Silverman, you know, it was hard to oh, recognize. Oh, he's so him. amazing! So he's amazing! Him. And then after the concert, you know, I I actually told him that. Why are you in this industry? <laughs> why don't why are you not being you know why are you know, not uh, in a in an industry where you are you should be a full time drummer? Yeah, and yeah. It was like uh, absolutely they rock the stage and they perform like like rock stars. Oh, that's so great! Yeah, we it was probably only like maybe six weeks before MavCon, and I messaged yeah. and I was like, "Hey, guys, and we had kind of joked about like, "Hey, we should do some songs," but like I knew if it just was like joking about it, it wouldn't actually happen. So I was like, "Hey, guys, do we want to do some, like put a band together?" And and I knew Adam Silverman, who lives in Nashville, who's recorded on all these albums as a studio drummer, like he is a professional drummer disguised as yeah. a web agency owner. Um, and I know Troy had had done a lot of like you know, concerts and guitar and singing and stuff. And I played bass guitar and I, my son is a very talented yeah. uh, keyboardist. He is. Uh, he's only, he is. he's only 15 and he's just, he's a, a, so, so good. Um, yeah. And so I was like, we just really need like maybe an electric guitar player that I could probably <laughs> recruit from one of my friends in town. 
Um, and so we put a band together. We were emailing and Slack messaging different song ideas and keys that we would do them in and which version of a recording we would do. And then everybody pretty much like practiced on their own. Uh, and yeah. then we came together and we rehearsed like just for one evening before that. Um, and I had programmed lights and video content and all the different haze and all the things. Um, and so it was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big production for our small group of, you know, folks that were there, but it was a lot of fun. What you have described and what actually happened, it was way more fun than what you described. So <laughs> oh, good, good. Yes. Sorry. I think if, Thank you. uh, idea is that, uh, you know, if someone have recorded that uh, on their phone, I'm sure Max would have recorded that. Mm -hmm. We should mm -hmm. actually put a video on Slack community and on, you know, Agency Mavericks Facebook page. So, yeah. you know, members or anyone who haven't attended the event, they can see what they actually missed there. Yeah, yeah. It was so much fun. It was so great. Yeah. And, and and the content of the, the, the conference was so great. You know, I think oh, hearing, yeah. from, hearing from the other coaches about, um, you know, different, like Thomas, uh, one of our coaches Thomas, yeah. talked about like the, the, I mean, the, I was just so inspired by the processes yes. that he put in place. He got his whole team around it. I think we have a, pr one of our previous episodes just has gone into this in a lot more detail when I was talking with him, but just the way that he got his team around and kind of sharing some of that behind the scenes stuff was so great. Um, Jen talking about goals and uh, kind of where you want to go, you know, five, 10 years from now, which most agency owners can't think five or 10 days from now, five or 10 minutes from now, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but to think like further out of like, what, why am I running this business and what am I trying to do and where do I want to go and what's the purpose behind all this? And then kind of backing that all down to like the here and now and just so many great uh, sessions and stuff that were just really impactful. Troy always delivers amazing, you know, yeah. keynotes and stuff with uh, talking about AI and all that kind of how that can be used and just kind of to, to grow your agency was incredible. Um, so I, I wanted to, if we could, while you were here, um, I know last time you were on the, the, the uh, agency hour, we talked about team and you have an amazing team at E2M. Uh, what is it like 90, 100 team members, some, some crazy number of team members, right? It's, it's 180 people, 180 people. Oh my goodness. Yeah. See, uh, yeah. it grew since the last time I talked to Manish yeah. uh, and it's just amazing. And I wanted to, if I know we talked about team and hiring and you gave some great, I, I don't know if I've told you this Manish, but um, yeah. when we were on the agency hours, probably like maybe a year ago, or it was a while ago, we were talking about the team and you had just taking your team to, uh, I think it was Bali or somewhere where you were doing this amazing trip and you had a video and I was just like, I was just blown away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it was just so inspired, which was amazing. Um, but you had said something on that, which I've used in a number of talks and I've done my best to give you the credit, but you said something like, um, leadership needs to I can't remember own the failures and pass the credit pass or the something credit like that. Exactly, and, yeah. and that just like really stuck with me. And I've used it in a number of different talks that I've given because I just feel like that is like where the rubber meets the road. Um, mm -hmm. And I had a recent like test of uh, how much I really, uh, you know, was, was holding to that or not recently because I had been at a, a all day leadership thing offsite with a bunch of business leaders um, and I came back to the office at the very end of the day and my phone and everything's blowing up from a client who, uh, we were, had just built their website. They've been a client for a long time. We've just built a new website for them and we had launched it over top of their wrong website. Like mm. they had two different websites and we <laughs> built a new one for one and we said. replaced, we replaced the other one yeah. by mistake. Um, and I, of course I had been out of the office, other people were doing all the things, whatever. And I couldn't, I didn't have any answers. I didn't know how we had made that mistake. I didn't know how quickly we were going to be able to get it back. Like I had just been gone and I didn't know. And like my, I kept and he, and like, I realized I just needed to call the client and say, it was my fault, you know, yeah. take, take basically own the, own the failure and, yep. And just, and like, it was the most hardest thing that I've like had to do in a while, but like the client was so appreciative that I just yeah. called him as the owner, that I took the ownership that I said, I'm going to give you an update every, 
I don't know if I said 15 or 30 minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to send you a note every 15 or 30 minutes till this is resolved and let you know the status. And I mean, we got it up, I think pretty quickly within an hour, hour and a half, whatever we had restored everything back and got it to the right place. But it was one of those things where I was like, oh man, like Manish said, like leadership needs to own the failures. Mm-hmm. And like, here I was having to deal with that, not really wanting to, you know? No, I, I think it's very, uh, it's very important. Similar thing happened recently, uh, you know, with one of our clients as well, where uh, the scope was not clear and kind of like, you know, we quoted without uh, looking at the actual design and then the plugin was uh suggested by the team without actually looking at the design and then later we realized that you know uh the plugin has its own limitations so we will not be able to meet the 100 percent design in the final output and literally like you know we decided to go on a call and you know same way client really appreciated the client is actually from australia and he really appreciated that uh and and i literally like you know after that we emailed him that how can we make sure that we don't get into the same situation again? Mm. And we understand that we should not have quoted this project without having 100% clarity. Mm. So, uh, you know, long story short, I want to add one more thing that what we started doing uh, at E2M as well. When something goes wrong, I tell team that, okay, come up with the three things which we could have done better from Mm. our end in order to not get into this situation, right? Mm. So, we are literally, you know, changing mindset of our uh, entire leadership team uh, to think more positive and optimistic mm-hmm. and learning from, you know, constantly learning uh, from every single mistake, right? So I want to bring a quote. I mean, uh, unfortunately, we all know like Charlie Munger passed away yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I personally have learned a lot from his wisdom, right? And mm-hmm. his, his favorite quote is like, you know, uh the life is kind of like you know it's all about like learn 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 right so i think that life properly lived is just learn 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 all the time right Mm. so uh i always let our team know that when something goes wrong let's not play a blame game right uh let's Mm. first own the failure and see like Mm. hey what we could have done better in order to avoid this situation so I think, you know, uh, that adds up to like, it it requires a mindset that, yeah, Mm -hmm. first you own the failure and then, you know, and then only you can learn from that. Otherwise, you cannot learn from that. And I think when you demonstrate that as a leader, that you're willing to own a failure, even though like you didn't push the wrong thing or you didn't, you know, whatever. And, and in this case, yeah. I hadn't done anything with, with that. And we had documentation in place. And like, there was a number of things that got overlooked that made that resulted in the mistake. But, um, I think it then is easier for your team to take the ownership when they fail, because this team member was very yes. on my team was very much like, I just totally messed this up. And this is why I thought it was supposed to be this one. And, and he, and he, it's not like he just was not paying attention. Like he had a reason why he thought it was supposed to be the way that it was, yes. but he owned it in the end. Um, and then I think also by letting your team fail and not, like permanent fail, like, you know, fire them, then it allows them to like experiment and get better and stuff. Because if everybody's afraid of like, Oh, if I make a big mistake, like I'm out, then like, no one's going to take any risks. No one's going to take any ownership. No one's going to like, you know, want to do the things because they know if they make a big mistake, like they're gone. But instead, if it's like you said, like a culture of learning and how can we get better at this and stuff, then like everybody just kind of like rises up. I feel like, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I know I, whenever, every time we have a, uh, you know, discussions going on around our leadership team and entire team, we all, we always tell them that it's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes as long as you are not making the same mistake again. Right. 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 And as long as you are learning from that, I think it's super, super important that every mistake you make, uh, you think like you paid a price to learn something mm-hmm. new uh, while making that mistake, right? So yeah. that is super, super important. And you are absolutely right that, you know, otherwise they wouldn't learn. And otherwise, uh, you know, as a leader, you will not uh, free up your time because you will be always afraid to pass on the responsibility while thinking that, okay, what if team might make a mistake, right? And that 
you know, vicious circle you get into and that never lets you free up your time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that this ties perfectly into what I wanted to ask you about on this episode, because I was, I was so excited to get to come on with you again. And, uh, especially after we had just spent time together in person. And, um, I, I wanted to ask you about this because I, I feel like even though I, I try to, my team and I were trying to, you know, we're just a team of 20 or whatever, and you're a team of 180, um, and all that, but still we we're trying to figure out like processes because just like you, we have a lot of people doing the same thing, you know, different designers designing different projects, different managers managing different projects, different, all the things. And you guys have some amazing uh, white label services that you offer to agencies with uh, development and design and copywriting and all the different things that you guys are doing. Um, I wanted to just ask you about how you basically keep the quality high with so many different people doing so many yeah. different things. And I, and I kind of know the answer. So I'm kind of trying to give you a softball yeah. pitch here, but I would love to just hear like things that you've learned about processes and kind of getting people all to do the same job in a, in a similar manner and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, people think that running these kind of organization, big team and, being in the position of, uh, you know, as a leader, you know, as a CEO of running this kind of organization is fun. It's not fun, actually. Uh, uh, you need a high pain tolerance. Hmm. Uh, you know what happens, you know, with this kind of big team, we have a like structure. There is a, a senior leadership team, uh, hmm. there's a second level leadership team, right? And with, a lot of times, most of the times, actually, it happens that you don't get to work on the problem which you want to work on, but you mm. actually have to work on the problem which company is going through, right? Mm. Because uh, at, at think like that, at, at my position, uh, I pretty much get all the problems filtered, which have not been solved. So... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On my table, there are only worst problems <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. because they have already figured out and they already solved the problems which they were able to do it. Mm -hmm. But if something is coming to me, which means they were not able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And and then obviously there is a bunch of worst problems, right? Mm -hmm. And when you get into this situation, uh, you know, as a, as a leader, you always think like, okay, I really want to work on a, things which are working really well. And so we can 10 X on that. I don't want to work on things which are not working well. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but however, you know, as a leader, what you really have to do is, although you don't like it, but you literally have to stop working on doing things which are really working well. Instead, you have to shift your focus on making things right, which are not actually going really well in the organization. Right. So I think, you know, uh, one of the first steps about creating the process uh, is making sure that there are clear roles and responsibilities defined at your organization, right? Mm -hmm. So one uh, rule we have in our organization that there are no uh, two people should not be doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. there should not be overlapping of roles and responsibilities. Otherwise, there will be always a possibility of, you know, uh, getting into a situation uh, where there is a conflict, right? Like and, you, and, a, you, and you don't necessarily mean two people not doing the same thing. You mean kind of two people. Res I, I think what you're saying is two people not responsible for one thing, right? Because then nobody, that's knows, who's owned, nobody knows who exactly. owns it, right? Yes. In that yeah. case, it's very hard to find who is going to take the full accountability, right? Right. So that is the very first thing. Second thing, you know, when you run into any problem, uh, which you are seeing commonly coming up again and again, again, and again, across the different, uh, or, uh, across the different, you know, departments of your mm -hmm. company, that's the number one priority. Uh, you should create a process around that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then, uh, I think, you know, we always think like, okay, we need to have a process for everything. But I would say if you want to have the processes and build, start building the processes, make sure you start building processes around your top level problems, which mm -hmm. your organization is currently going through. 
or which might go through when you scale because mm-hmm. if you are going through a certain problems and when you grow the problems is going to go even bigger right mm-hmm. so you want to fix the problem right now while making sure define the processes while defining processes there are two things right uh, you want to have the key stakeholders while defining the processes mm-hmm. so uh, when we define and i allow to be a part of that as well so we have like couple of people we sit brainstorm that okay let's put everything what we know we record a zoom meeting we when we start discussing the okay this is the process we need to define we start a zoom recording we start like ai summary and then you know we put that transcript into ai tool that gives us the process mm-hmm. uh, and then someone goes through that to make sure that you know the process outlines everything what we discussed so mm. because you really want to make sure that the stakeholders the people who are going to follow the process are part of creating the process mm. because they are the people who are going to use the process it's not me it's not like you know uh you as a leader who is actually going to work on the ground right so in that case they are on the same page and they can think of everything uh they can think of and that is something what makes them also excited to follow the process because they are on the same page right so one of the common mistakes i see uh you know a lot of leaders make it organized at a large scale or when they are growing they want to define the process for the problem they want to solve not the problem organization has right they want to just create the process for the sake of uh making their organization look like more organized mm. but you might sometimes do not need a tons and tons of processes so it's super important to know that you only have the processes which solve your day to day problems right and which kind of helps you optimize things and kind of like uh, make sure that you can avoid any sort of like you know uh, situations uh, which put uh, projects into escalation or there is an in, in, inter conflict of interest or there is like accountability issue right so it's kind of like you want to have the process of something which you are using on a daily basis you don't want to have a process Uh, which is sitting there but it is not being used on daily mm-hmm. basis right mm-hmm. which is super super important so i think these are the things you know we make sure while uh, creating process and also uh, one of the most important things is like uh that process has to be constantly evolved and mm. updated mm-hmm. based on your experiences you cannot have the same process forever right uh it's kind of like the process you have for 100 people company would not work for 200 people company mm-hmm. right and and same goes on so mm-hmm. it's super important that you know we are we kind of like you know at least update that every quarter mm-hmm. uh, and right now also we are in the process of creating a lot of new processes to facilitate our future growth uh, but yeah i think you know that's what my uh, thoughts are uh, you know for the uh, processes where yeah make sure that you know uh, you have a clear roles and responsibility there is no overlapping of responsibility divided to two different people uh, people are involved in creating the process who are actually going to follow the processes mm. and processes you need to have only for the things which you are you know which are your biggest problem and which you can foresee and which solve your day to day problem and which can be actually used on a day to day basis Uh, and then you know processes need to be constantly evolved yeah oh it's so good so so much gold right there i was if you heard my keyboard clicking i was taking notes on your on your <laughs> advice because it was just so good um one thing one more thing i want to ask you about this while we're on this and we can go to something else but um i know a lot of agency owners and, and i i honestly find myself struggle with this sometimes too where you know we try to define and this is kind of more with like support plans and some of the different plans that i'm sure you guys mm-hmm. offer and that we offer yeah. you know you try to define like for for me if it's a care plan or an seo plan or a social media marketing plan whatever the plan is we try to define like this is what's included with the plan right and it might yes. be a certain number of time it might be certain types of tasks it might be certain deliverables whatever the things are and then you know inevitably there's somebody that wants something that's just a little bit outside and i think the temptation yeah. of it is that like 
we could probably do the thing, right? It's not that mm -hmm. we don't know how to do the request or we don't have the ability or the technical know-how or whatever, but it's kind of outside this box that we've defined. And if it was just one client asking for one thing outside of the box and that's all that it ever was, it wouldn't be a big deal, right? You would just help yeah. one client and it'd be done. But when you have hundreds or thousands of clients, you know, and you're, even if you only have 20 or 30 or 40 clients and you're a smaller agency or freelancer and you're just kind of starting out, like pretty soon what you find is that like, oh, well, we did this one exception for this person. We did this exception for this person and yeah. you know, all these different things where it just starts to feel like, well, the box is supposed to be here, but now we're solving all these other things that like take extra time and maybe we don't have as well defined or not all the team knows how to do that extra thing or whatever. And so I would just love to hear from you like as you've, kind of sure. as you all have crafted plans and boundaries and what's in and out, like what have you found? Like, how do you, I, I don't want to say hold the line, but like, how do you hold the line, you know, or, or where no, do you, you absolutely. know? Yeah. I, yeah. I see exactly what you say. And we have faced this situation, you know, when we were mm -hmm. kind of like small in the size, mm -hmm. our team used to facilitate just to make clients experience really great. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, we started realizing that we have to draw a boundary. We have to draw a line, right? Uh, that's where the process come in, comes into picture, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's a great client experience, but then you see that it is not sustainable. Right. Uh, one of the problems uh, happens with that. When you do it once, your client will always expect it in the future. Then mm -hmm. you cannot stop, right? Mm -hmm. So instead... If you just draw a line from the very, at least uh, I would say that two things. If you are doing it for your existing clients, make sure you make the price change and include that and at least stop doing it for your, all your new clients. So at least mm -hmm. you are not setting the wrong expectation from that, right? Mm -hmm. And start incorporating that thing in your you know, package and, and increase your pricing accordingly. And even if they are coming up with something outside of that, you have to say no. You have to say, I wish we could do it, but that's something out of the plan. If you would like to do it, we'll be happy to provide you an additional quote or we can you know, create your package accordingly where we'll include that as well. Because that way, client will also appreciate, but uh, you have to absolutely draw a line. So the best way to solve this problem is uh, Communicate very clearly to your client if you are doing, because you cannot say we won't do it from, you know, next month onwards. And they were like, you know, you guys were doing so, you know, till date and what happened now? So you want to communicate very softly that, hey, you know, we have been doing this. It was not a part of that. We would continue like to do it, but in order to do so, we are increasing our price. And at least, you know, for new clients, you want to absolutely uh, set a process that mm. this is the boundary uh, you really want to set. Mm. That's good. That's good. So, yeah, I think there can be a tendency of like the freelancer, the agency, right, to just say like, oh, we'll just keep doing it or we'll just add that in or like we yeah. kind of make that sacrifice. But I, I like your approach of saying like, hey, we can't do that. But if it's something that you really want done, you know, we can we can charge this additional fee or put you on this higher plan or or whatever, right? So that there's compensation. Because what ha we both know what happens, right? When you do that, yeah. you know, <laughs> nine out of 10 of them are like, ah, actually, I really didn't need that thing. I don't want to yeah. pay the extra money. And like, I don't want it that badly, right? Every once in a while, they'll be like, I really want it badly and I'll pay the money. But if you put that line up, you're not quite saying no because you're giving them the option to get it. But because yes. it's costing, them more, then they're gonna they're gonna think twice or three times about it before they do it, right? And sometimes you know what happens that uh, I have experienced that team actually uh, went like you know above the above and beyond. You know they went extra mm -hmm. mile. They did mm -hmm. something additional at without cost, and something wrong goes, and then client fires back. Mm. You know, that you guys did and and the team's intention in really good. They actually right, right. went extra mile, but mm -hmm. that backfired. And that's mm -hmm. where the team realized that oh, we were trying to do it going above and beyond, and that kind of backfired, right? And that's mm -hmm. where the process is very important. And that's where, you know, we let then we have to chime in. Our customer service team will chime in and let clients know, hey, you know, a team actually did it you know, went extra mile and did it for you. 
So you really want to make sure that uh, if you are doing something uh, which you are going extra above and beyond, you want to let your client know that, hey, this mm-hmm. is not included, but I would be happy to do it one time, right? But will not be able to read next time, something like that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's depending good. on your uh, relationship with client, but you have to communicate if you are doing something extra and, 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 the, and the psychology of, you know, people and, and obviously client is like, if you do it once, they would expect it, you know, mm. a second time as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think the communication uh, is super, super important in these kind of situations. Mm. That's so good. And that's why you have so many team members and clients because you've, you've done a good job at this. Um, Manish, this is episode 100. I can't believe it. Oh, 100, wow. Episode 100 of the Agency Hour. Um, you guys have been uh, a longtime sponsor of the Agency Hour, which we so appreciate um, you just supporting this and helping agencies and freelancers grow through all the content that we're putting out here. Um Thank you. I mean, that's just incredible. That's amazing. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, it is absolutely a special episode, the hundredth episode. Uh, congratulations to you know agency Mavericks, you and Troy and Emily for uh, you know uh, running this community and for this podcast where you know people learn a lot. This is absolutely special, and it's kind of like you know I feel like it's a coincidence, it's privilege to be one hundredth episode mm-hmm. as a guest. Mm-hmm. So it's absolutely a privilege. And uh, like, you know, I was talking to you earlier as well. Uh, uh, we feel like we belong to this community. This community has given us so much love and we have made like so many valuable connections. Uh, we mm. have met incredible people in this community. So uh, we, we absolutely feel great to be grateful to support, you know, this community, support this podcast and, it, it feels like, you know, we are giving back to the community because we love agency ecosystem. And yeah. this way we kind of like feel like giving back to the community. Oh, I just, it's, we just so appreciate it. I know I can say on behalf of the whole team, like we are just uh, thrilled to have you as a partner and your support. And just, I know for Troy and for me and for agency Mavericks and, and everything, just uh, your support has been unwavering and uh, it just means a lot to us. Um, take us back if you would. I, you probably know the story better than me. Um, how how did this come about? T- tell tell me tell us the story. Yeah, it's it's actually interesting. You know, uh, I think we underestimate, still underestimate the power of cold email, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was like one and a half year ago. Uh, you know, I was randomly browsing late night, and uh, I actually. Uh, came across agency mavericks i saw the website i saw i I did a good amount of research probably for an hour or so around the same time when troy stepped down as a ceo and uh, emily took Mm -hmm. it over Mm -hmm. around the Mm -hmm. same time and i i I saw you know uh about the community i I kind of read more about troy and i I really liked uh the the entire uh, community and i'm like I, i think you know i want to uh, connect with Troy. I want to learn more about community. What this, uh, you know, these people are doing. And I literally, you know, it was like very late night, and I did a cold email. You know, I stuck for some time. I did like cold email to Troy mm-hmm. that hey, I love what you guys are doing, and I would love to see if there are any collaboration or uh, opportunities how we can support your community because I think we saw the same audience, uh, but at different capacity. So. Uh, I actually wrote this thing to Troy that, you know, I feel like what we do is an extension of what you guys do at Agency Mavericks. Like Mm -hmm. you help agencies to grow and scale their operations. And when they scale and grow, the second, the first problem they run into is bandwidth and capacity. And that's what the problem we solve, right? So, uh, and it wasn't very open. I had no any idea what kind of collaboration it will look like. Uh, right. And, and then Troy replied to me on the very next day and I like, I would love to have a conversation with you. And, and that's why that's the first, uh, our association started with like, you know, uh, I was, I recorded a podcast with him. So Mm -hmm. that was the first thing we did. And then we got to know more about that. And then we, uh, talked about like, okay, we are doing this milk on and, and we, 
did the first milk on sponsorship last uh, you know year in San Diego. Yeah, and then you know that was really great. I, unfortunately, I couldn't attend that, uh, mm-hmm. and but one of our team members attended, and we really liked the community and you know the vibe, learning. And then, you know, uh, Troy and I had a discussion. We decided that, okay, okay, we want to be an exclusive sponsor of all Melcon events for entire 2023. So wow. we were the sponsor for virtual, happened in February, Gold Coast mm-hmm. happened in May, and, you know, this Melcon in Virginia in October as well. So, yeah, that's how, uh, you know, we got connected. And since we met a couple of times uh, in person, uh, we kind of like got to know each other a lot. I think, you know, uh, Troy and I have a lot of similar thought process in a, in a lot of, uh, you know, different ways. Uh, so, which is great. I, I like, you know, uh, how you guys are on the community, you know, yeah. I truly, we truly believe in what agency maybe does and you know, mission and reason and everything. So th- that's how, you know, the collaboration, uh, started getting, you know, a yeah. more and more, uh, we started collaborating more and more things. And so yeah, a few months back, you know, uh, we discussed that, okay, we want to be a, an exclusive sponsor of the podcast. And that's mm-hmm. how we became a podcast sponsor. Well. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, you're such, you're, you and your team and, and the service that you guys provide is such an invaluable uh, service for our whole community because there's so many people that, you know, they, they need some support, but they don't need a full yeah. team member or they, they don't want to try to figure out how to manage this, you yes. know, teach this person or get, make sure they're doing the right thing. And so to just have someone like you all that can just come in and deliver a high quality service, get up to speed very quickly. Right. Obviously like just kind yeah. of hit the, hit the gate running and, and everything is just so invaluable, I think for our audience. And so I'm just, I'm just thrilled to, uh, to have you guys, uh, and be partnered with you guys. And I have to ask you, Manish, you don't seem like the cold email type of person. Do you, do you send a lot of cold emails or was this sort of an out of the blue type of thing? Like an, no, an unusual thing for you? It was uh, absolutely unusual. Uh, it's just like, I don't send tons of cold emails. I, mm-hmm truly do some research and yeah. I only do cold email when I feel like, okay, you know, this is something I want mm-hmm. to get involved into. Right. And yeah. I think, you know, when your reasons uh, are aligned, I think our reason is very much aligned. What reason we have at E2M and what reason agency Mavericks has like helping agencies grow and scale. Right. Mm. Uh, so which is the same reason we have, then you feel yeah. like, okay, uh, you want to work with these kind of people who have the mm-hmm. similar reason. And uh, I, I truly believe it, like, you know, uh, you are absolutely lucky if you get to work with people who have a similar thought process and similar vision, and mm-hmm. then your journey becomes so much fun and you, your work doesn't feel like work. It, yeah. it, it feels like, you know, magic to someone else, but for you, it's just the fun, right? So, yeah. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, it's very, it was very unusual. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, sure, I'm sure yeah. you like me gets a ton of, uh, I get a ton of cold yeah. email, I but it's, so very, it's very spammy and like, Hey, yeah. you know, we can, we can improve the SEO on your website. I'm like, we do no. the SEO on our website and you haven't looked at it and you're just spending me some spam email or whatever the thing is. Right. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure you get a ton of those as well. So uh, that's why I just think it's really cool that one, it's not the normal thing that you do and two that no. uh, Troy responded, you guys connected so quickly and stuff it was just, it's just really yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah. And I think, and I think like you said too, you know, having the similar passion and values yeah. and you know, we're, we're serving the same community, but we're obviously offering different services and ways yes. to help that community. And so I just think there's so many things that align really well. And, um, yeah, it's just it's just just a joy to get to work with you guys. So exactly, um, it's, it's that's the yeah. right word you picked up. It's so much, you know, when we support this uh, Melcon events, when we see that agency owners are, you know, meeting each other, learning from each other, and we feel so great and it's so much joy to see people learning from each other, right? Uh, and then you know, people take away those learnings and implement on their agency business and seeing them helping their agency grow. And you feel like, okay, you, by supporting this kind of events, you feel like you are contributing towards their agency uh, success, mm-hmm. which is yeah. a great feeling. 
Yeah, it is. It is great. And I, yeah. I personally love helping anyone, you know, if I can help someone yeah. shortcut, do something that I learned the hard way and, and help them do it faster or yeah. better, or easier. Like, it's just such a great feeling to be able to help others. And I know you feel the same way. Absolutely. <clears throat> So Manish, thank you so much. Wow. This is just such a treat to get to hang out with you. Uh, I feel honored to get to, to host the hundredth episode with you. Um, yeah. and I just, I can't wait for us to get to hang out, uh, hopefully again, real soon in person. And, uh, I've already, I already told you pre-call what, uh, my, my next outing is going to yes. be when you're back in the States. So we're going to have an amazing time. Uh, Max, Absolutely. who's our producer, uh, got to go ATV four wheel riding with us. And so I'm going to, I'm going to get you when you're back here and we're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. No, I'm excited. And, you know, thank you for having me on this, uh, special hundredth episode. I'm grateful for, you know, the connections, grateful for, uh, you know, to be a part of this agency Mavericks community. And I'm super excited to see you next time in person. Thanks a lot, Manish. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Agency Hour podcast and a massive thanks to Manish for joining us. I always enjoy catching up with him and I'm so appreciative of everything that he and his team does at E2M to support the Agency Mavericks community. Okay, folks, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and please share this with anyone who you think needs to hear it. I'm Johnny Flash. Let's get to work.